my, my talk, I, I focus on the economics of tropical soybean. Uh, this particular talk is about the Spousian bargain. This is a tough, tough situation, okay, in tropical grain production. Um, so the key point of the walk away is um, there's this bargain at play that we're looking for new technologies. We're trying to alleviate poverty, move um, uh, uh, rural farmers in the developing world um, uh, out of poverty traps, trying to look for technologies that increase productivity. And really, we focus on the increased uh, returns to labor, to make labor more productive. And you can simply say, just putting a soybean, bending over, putting a seed in the ground, is it a good seed or a bad seed? Is it a productive crop or a non-productive crop? And soybean is a new technology. It's not grown traditionally in Africa, like it wasn't grown here, in many places it wasn't grown in Brazil, uh, but it's highly productive. And so when you can in increase the returns to labor, a lot of good things happen. Rural wages rise. Incentives to emigrate fall. There's relief to women farmers who, who provide most of the labor. Uh, it supports rural economic development, improves food security, and then reduces the dependence on imports of staple foods. So it does a lot of things that we can make farmers more productive. And so successful and sustainable soybean as a technology achieves it's a miracle crop. It really does. It transforms rural economy. Uh, but it's a very intensive user of inputs. Okay. Hence the bargain. How do you manage this bargain? So I'm not going to go into uh, solutions or ideas. Probably we can do that in discussion or, or, or later at lunch or other times. But do we make the deal? And many are in denial of the deal. We're going to say, no, we should go low input show some data of what low input uh, gets you in the tropics. Okay? Uh, if so, uh, how can we reduce, if we do engage the bargain, how do we reduce the, the externality? There's some great work, a leader in this field about how to achieve growth is, is Fugli, and Fugli and Rada had a paper where they looked at the sources of agricultural growth. How do you get growth? How do you become productive? And they look at um, uh, four areas. And the, the, uh, the purple area, this area down at the bottom, is they call the extensification strategy. That says, if I want more, I farm. If I want to double my production and I'm farming on one hectare, so I'll go farm two hectares and double my production. This is a large ag footprint sort of scenario. Uh, I'm not going to talk about irrigation, but that's the red area. And then the green area is the green revolution strategy. This is intensification of inputs. These data are for glo global agriculture together. Okay. And you can see back on the, on the lower left and during the green revolution period, that we got more, farmers were more productive using more inputs. 60% okay, of output growth was driven by inputs. And that little blue area at the top is this miracle area of technology, of management efficiency, knowledge management. Uh, these are improvements in the system, in tangibles was a small percentage. And you can see over time this reduction in dependence on inputs globally to the present period where 72% of growth is derived through managerial, technical, technological solutions, efficiency, coordination, and so forth. And very relatively very little, about 13%, is through input expansion. This is globally, um, and a little bit less in extensification. So there's been a radical transformation globally. But we want to look at trop the tropics. Okay, so that's where this is going to go. Okay. So we've been doing work uh, in Mato Grosso a number of years 
and we have estimated the same data for soybean and, and corn farmers. And so the brown uh, columns are those data from Hootley and, and, and Grata, uh, the 72, 13, 11, and so forth. And you've got this total factor productivity here on the left um, and uh, extensification uh, two over intensification and so forth. And when we look at soybean and maize producers, they're very, very productive, very, very profitable, and we want to know how do they do it. If we're looking to the frontiers of agriculture, the leaders, how is it happening that you have this rapid extension meeting the, the global food challenges we face through, through tremendous productivity? Very little of it is through technology and, 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 and managerial efficiency and efficiency uh, mechani mechanisms, about 9%. Most of it is still, and our data go through 2012, through intensification use, intensified use of inputs. The environments in, trop in the tropics are hostile. Soils are poor. Uh, they require inputs. That's how these soils have been transformed. And 27%, about a quarter of the output, is driven through extensification. And most of this would be the extensification of transforming, most recently, uh, converting pastures over to, to uh, row crop agriculture. So we see right now producing in the tropics is an intensive um, uh, technology requiring input, and you and you get some, some some decent outputs. We had a group of guys here recently, a great group of researchers from northern Ghana, uh, and Doug B was here, and his team were here, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, and they wrote a very kind of cheeky paper. It was interesting. This is from 2013, and they said. You know, there's been all this work to support soybean production in northern Ghana. And they called it vigorously supported. And they identified six programs to support the development of soybean from USAID, the Danish uh, uh, Development Authority, and so forth. Six, and AGRA, lots of energy. And they conclude that soybean production is very unprofitable. You do all this effort, and it's unprofitable. So this would be unproductive. We're looking at two areas, Ghana, uh, in a close to the equator, um, and and so he's a Mato Grosso um, as well. You know, similar sorts of, of environments, and we come to this sort of uh, picture, and you have four. Uh, 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 approaches, production functions to producing a soybean. And what Dobie's writing about is this group over here. Why This is unprofitable. And then um, we do work in, in Ghana, is this that second set of uh, columns, the Mato Grosso experience is the third, and then we look at Illinois on the right. So how do they produce soybean? They're producing the same soybean. Okay, but doing it quite differently. Okay, the inputs are the little blue bar, the uh, uh, labor is the orange bar, uh, there's other is the gray bar, and the fix, which is really the knowledge, the capital, the knowledge assets are the gold or yellow bar on the right. And what Dobie and the, the Ghanaian researchers were looking at, which is uh, replicated in other studies of, of soybean producers in Sub-Saharan Africa, 76% of the inputs were labor. It is essentially a no-input, all-labor uh, system. Very low cost, relatively, especially in cash out. And you could think environmentally sustainable, in a sense, because there are no, essentially no inputs. But the returns to labor were negative one point, negative point one three to one. So for each unit of labor, you you lost money. It was not worth your time. 
hence unprofitable, hence you get this adoption uh, and not a solution um, for um, uh, poverty reduction. The second set of, of data come from the same region. And we have a, a team, uh, part of the innovation lab, this is Awuni and Reynolds, who are taking this middle space and they're adding some appropriate technologies. They're increasing inoculum, putting inoculum on for that matter, phosphorus, increasing seed populations, getting a canopy, doing some basic management, advanced management. Okay. They reduce the, the labor proportion from 76% to 50 but it's still very labor intensive. It's not mechanized. But inputs rise threefold. You have to use inputs. When they do this, they're able to triple yield. Yields over on the left hand side, two minutes, perfect. On the left hand side are 600 kilos per hectare. Awuni and Reynolds are at about 2,000 kilos per hectare. So the returns to labor turn positive at 0.79 to 1. Now it becomes sustainable. Maybe not competitive globally, but now we're understanding we're getting into a space of, of economic sustainability. On the, 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 the Brazilian system, which is that third set of columns, 47%. We said it's this is this is um, um, this uh, input intensive, crop. very successful yields that are 30% above the global average, very profitable returns to labor very high at four to one. This is a very efficient system. Relatively little capital relative to inputs, and then. Basically, what Google and Rada were, were looking at is this uh, U.S. model on the right, which would be in Illinois, which is capital in, intensive. Okay, so the the bargain then says, well, the left hand side is not sustainable. We're going to have to move to the right. How far? In what ways? Okay. So grain production in the tropics highly productive, but the low input models are not sustainable. So to get the transformative power of productive grain technologies, inputs are required. And then what about the environment? What about smart technologies and policies to reduce environmental impacts? And, and, and often in our funding and so forth, there's a disconnect here we would argue needs to be integrated. And there are a number of ideas to address these ex environmental externalities. And so that's you know something for discussion. We certainly want to hear from colleagues, um, other colleagues uh, from Woods Hole and so forth um, about how to, to address this bargain. So with that, I'm also.